notice requirement provided for the open public meeting law has been satisfied. Notice was properly given. Sudden notice has been transmitted to the Courier News and the Star Ledger on Wednesday, January 8, 2014, as well as posted on the bulletin board in the city clerk's office. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call? Yes, Council President. Council Members Brown? Here. Reeves? Here. Storch? Here. Teller? Here. Williams? Absent during roll call. Chairman Reed? Absent during roll call. Council President Rivers? Here. We have a quorum this evening. Thank you. Um, I mean, Mr. Reeves, Council Members Reeves absent. Do, can I have a motion to um, a nomination for um, Acting City Committee, Committee of the Whole? I nominate Councilman Vera Greaves. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Any communications from the mayor? Um, yes. From Ms. Honorable Mayor Adrian O'Mapp, correspondent dated May 10, 2014, addressed to members of the governing body requesting the advice and consent of the appointments of the following nominees to serve as a member of the Plainfield Cultural and Heritage Commission. And Vera Belli, Nancy. Nancy Piwa, Victoria Griswold, Albert D. Pettis, 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 John Brinkley, Jennifer Thompson, David Rutherford, Louis Caledon, William Howard Terry, effective immediately upon adoption and confirmation of open office. Any other communication or permission? None at, none at this time. Um, financial reports, reports of special committees. Yes, the clerk's office of receipt of public safety report received from Councilwoman Tracy Park. Thank you. Um, no discussion items, no unfinished business. Okay. Wow. That's quick. All right. So we have public comments right now. The floor is now open to public comments limited to resolutions, ordinance being considered this evening. The floor is now open. John A. Pritchard, 753 Arlington Avenue in Plainfield. On the uh, thermal year for the uh, fire division, I'm in favor of uh, the firefighters getting and getting their gear because they are on the front lines protecting us day and night. Let's not forget the 343 New York City firefighters who were killed on September 11th protecting the citizens of New York and uh, all the citizens of the surrounding area from, from fire disaster as a result of those terrorist attacks. They, our firefighters are out there every day, day and night. And I wish to thank you for backing them up in every way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any more public comments? Uh, yes, my name is Paul McCullen, a resident of the borough of South Plainfield, 1213 Walnut Street. I have to actually here tonight because <clears throat> I work on North Avenue and at the request of the business owner, I've come here. Um, I have a question about Z14, uh, a resolution about grant application for the historic area of the North Avenue Historic District. Um, in particular, um, it seems that this is about street uh, streetscape improvements. Um, the reason I'm here bringing this up is because um, not only did our business owner, who actually owns your building, but several of other business owners and building owners receive notices of violation this past month pertaining to the brickwork on North Avenue. Um, and our opinion is it's kind of a uh, horse before the cart if the owners of the buildings have to maintain and make repairs, and within five, six months' time, the city's going to come and tear up everything. In the process, uh, we'd like to know, are the, uh, is the council, or in that particular matter, the mayor's office going to be taking these violations and discarding them? Um, so your, your violations and discarding them? I'm not sure. Well, I, we're a bit confused as to, it's a point of interest, in our opinion. Um, if the city is going to issue violations, and then within several months' time go and tear up the entire street and make improvements, why would we be issuing summonses to violations to the to the building I'm, owners? I'm not sure if so what your violations are or how they'll be addressed, but that's something I, I'd be willing to discuss with you. Okay, 
Um, uh, it's just something we'd like to. We're not going to do, tear up your violations because clearly I don't know what your violations are. I know we are going to be doing some, some uh, street improvements um, if we get this grant. So that might be something we have to discuss later on. Okay, I, it's just something that we want to bring to the to the attention of the city that you know um, they've gone and issued violations for a possibility of work they're going to be doing if you know you know they kind of put the either the violations on hold and wait to see if the grant is supported by the state and then go forward or not. That's you can have more detailed conversation with me and our engineering department. Uh, okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I have a question. I was going to say this for later, but since you brought it up, um, is there somebody, it's called for Z14, but is there someone here that could describe what the what the proposed improvements are going to be? She's, she's actually on her way. I can wait then. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Lamar Maxson, 1040 Hillside Avenue, Plainfield. I've um, been in this town 44 years, long time. Uh, I'd like to um, preface this with uh, that I have a, uh, as a result of open disclosure, I want to say uh, my son worked for the city up to uh, a few days ago. This MC214-14, um, amending chapter 11, I don't know what, what it is, compensation and pay periods, <laughs> creating a new section entitled direct deposit of the municipal um, code. No, I'm sorry, 15. In order to amend and supplement Chapter 2, Article City Council to amend Section 9, regular meetings, and require that all City Council meetings be televised. It's my understanding that uh, the uh, Director of Media has been um, released, fired, uh, without proper, I, I would consider, without proper uh, procedure, because he was uh, fired without two weeks' notice. I understand that he's been doing the job admirably. Uh, I tried to uh, understand what was going on. I understand that they're also, uh, in, uh, over the last few weeks, we were trying to hire somebody to be the public information director, which was, uh, I guess they would be in charge of the television television station or having this uh, this um, meeting televised the uh, agenda and our regular meeting. Um, I can't understand it. I, I understand how politics works, that it's difficult, you know, to uh, get around things that you want to have done, people you want to hire. You know, you can change the uh, title of the uh, of the, of the job, and uh, my son Lamar, like I said, you know, in, uh, on, the, on behalf of Disclosure, has been working for the city a long time. He's been here for 44 years, and the person that uh, they tried to hire for this TV job didn't come anywhere near the qualifications that he had. I think it was a sham that he was uh, interviewed for it. He was only interviewed because um, they knew the powers that be, that they wanted someone else. And it angers me. And I'm emotional about it. You know, the television station was working well. He's been working with the television station for years. Um, he's done an admirable job. There's never been any prior complaint. And you, one day you call in and say you're fired. And it's quite a coincidence that you were fired right after that we didn't want, you know, well, that Mayor Mack didn't want or couldn't get his person in there for the public information. You know, a couple of our um, council people have known Lamar for many, many years. They know his qualifications in television commercials, he's taken 
kids uh, out to uh, out to uh, Colorado, and uh, it's uh, it's something that I can't understand. I would hate to see the city come back and try to hire somebody in that position. Now you take somebody out of the head of the uh, division and leave assistant people and and um, uh, what would you call it? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. People who don't, um, they have no experience. They're summer interns. That's what, that was the word I was looking for. You got interns working, very few people with the experience that he has and shown to be. The interview process was a sham. I know it. The people who did the interviewing know it. Mayor Matt knows it, and it angers me. This man has um, committed himself to the city. He's shown that he's qualified. He has the credentials, and we failed to look at it. Council President. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, you have to understand that it's an emotional thing with me because I know the man. He is my son. We came here in the winter of, of 1970. You know, you sit here in the school. I've seen this uh, town I can remember. Our first black mayor. When I first came here, it was a white mayor. I've seen the town change. We love this town. We want to see it succeed. But some of the things that are going on that the mayor has done and doing, I don't agree with. That number one thing, like I said, because of my disclosure that he is my son, but he's also highly qualified to do that job. He was completely overlooked and he was treated miserably. And I don't like it. You know, and I want Mayor Matt to know it. You know, there's a couple of council people that know him, know what he's done, know what his credentials are. Comcast over at the Annex, and at that time, programming was basic. There wasn't a uh, a formal process for getting things on, and but at least we had a station. And um, I've been looking at the station more intensely recently, and uh, let me tell you, it has improved a thousand percent. There are cultural things. There are you know a review of the council meetings and everything. It is a real treasure for Plainfield, and Lamar should be commended for leading a team that has brought that to this level. I know budgets are tight, but whatever can be done in order to maintain him in a leadership position, I wholeheartedly support. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Stewart, 1171 Gresham. I'm also here in support of Lamar Maxson. Um, I just want to give council and administration a brief time.
timeline of what's going on with the media. Uh, first, the budget, uh, there was a budget amendment by the city council um, where the budget was reduced for the main effect of uh, not funding the, the PIO for the media director position. Shortly after, Mayor Mapp had a controversial public address expressing his uh, frustration at the city council and other um, political figures for his lack of support, for what he considers lack of support. Um, and, you know, I, on a side note, I, I thought some of his comments were just too personal and, and made it a personal attack versus making it a political statement and just speaking about the issues. Uh, because of that, City Council then had a special meeting to uh, express public condemnation for that public address. Um, and then shortly after, I think the next day, Mayor Matt cuts funding for the taping of City Council uh, meetings. Then shortly after that, the election happens and in which the New Democrats did not uh, succeed in uh, taking as many uh, positions or something that they wanted to, and then the next day, the following day, Lamar Max is fired. That's a very strange timeline. Sad. And that, and it's, it is sad. Hmm. And, it, and it shows that media is being used as a political tool mm -hmm. instead of a city tool, in which the administration or the city council or whatever side you want to pick, but the side you fall on, it seems like you can't use the media tool to express your own political message then you're going to attack it, and you're going to cut it. And the media tool, sh the media production, the media um, department should not be using that function. Um, if you look at, you know, uh, as everyone spoke about, Lamar has a very strong resume. But you could just keep it as simple as look at his Facebook page, mm -hmm. and you see the activity he does in the community with the pictures of um, his volunteer work and his constant YouTube feeds. I mean. YouTube's been here for a, a decade, but you, you now have a fully functional YouTube page dedicated to Plainfield. Um, and you also see all the other great accomplishments he does uh, and it has done for the city of Plainfield. Um, you know, it was mentioned about this, this idea of cost cutting, but let's just look at the numbers. The 2013 budget for media was $113,000 roughly for the salaries. Um, it was requested that the media budget go back, go up two hundred eighty-six thousand dollars, but it was reduced to one hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars. So that's an additional sixty thousand dollars that went to media. So what is the cost cutting? Why do, why do you need cost? Cutting? I have a uh, few more minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. So you have fifty to sixty thousand dollars additional money, and yet people are going to claim broke. That doesn't make sense. Um, I, I, I just want to again repeat my frustration with what seems to be appear, appears as the administration clearing house for one or selected persons. Um, you know, I, I know a, uh, Mayor Matt. I talked to him on several occasions. I, I think he's a very intelligent person, but some of his actions have frustrated me and have, have grown concerned. Um, this is not. Um, Personal. This should not be taking personal politics, and this administration and running the city should not be taken personal. And if you have problems with somebody, you can't take it out on other people. And that's what I feel like is happening. The administration is taking it out on Lamar Maxson, as well as taking it out on the, the, the uh, city residents who view these tapes online or what have you, or view it later, and he's going to try to restrict it. I, I think that's just. There's so many other things you could do to find money than to restricting taping. How, how much does this really cost? I mean, I'm sure people would do it just for the experience. So to claim that, oh, we have to reduce, uh, 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 we have to reduce costs by uh, restricting the taping of city council meetings, it's just, that's just ridiculous. Thank you. 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 Good evening. Uh, Michael Allen, 620 Sheridan Avenue. Uh, also here. Sorry. Uh, also here to, uh, in support of Lamar Maxson and him being uh, rehired for the position in the media relations department. Um, I've been in Plainfield since I was three years old. 
and there are not many people that have vested interest in the city and seeing that it's uh, succeeding. Uh, Lamar Maxson would be that type of person. I worked with Lamar for quite a long time, went to school together, worked together as entrepreneurs. We produced from 01 to 2005 the Rhythm and Blues by the Brook concert in Cedarwood Park. Uh, we also worked on the, uh, he asked me to be a, become a member of the cable, Plainfield Cable Television Advisory Board from 2009 to 2012. Uh, under his leadership, he was able to, we were able to affect some positive change for the city of Plainfield with respect to specifically, uh, one of the biggest changes was in uh, franchise relations uh, with the internet service providers, companies like Verizon and Comcast. There are certain fees that they are supposed to pay to the city, a certain percentage, uh, based upon the um, what's paid on someone's bill on a monthly basis. Uh, we basically call those companies to the mat uh, to for that money that hadn't been basically attained in the past for the sake of media relations, internship programs, things like that that Lamar Maxson has put in place. Uh, as he, as in his position in the media relations department, it, it's all been positive. When you've done a search, we did, uh, we, we actually talked about a, a YouTube search that he did when he first started. Mm -hmm. And the only search that came up was, uh, for the city of Plainfield, was some youth fighting in front of Sin Yu Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. So now look at the positive imagery and content that we have on PCTV, the internship program that Lamar Maxson began, and, and how the, the media relations department has evolved since he's been there. Um, under his leadership, he, he brought some quality members to the Plainfield Cable Television Advisory Board. Uh, and because it was him, that's why I came. We're all busy people. But I make time for Lamar because I believe in what he does. I always have. And he has been in Plainfield as long, as long, if not longer, than I have. And there's never been a question about how he put the city first before him, or else he, you know, he would have left like anybody else. So to attempt to replace him, potentially, with someone from the outside that does not have a vested interest in the city of Plainfield is, I don't, I don't understand that. It's unfathomable. So. I, I ask that the uh, City of Plainfield Council strongly reconsider rehiring Mr. Maxson for this position because he's done nothing but good since he's been here. And because he has that vested interest, I don't foresee him stopping anytime soon to see if he's given another chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Dunn, 537 Belvedere Avenue, playing for New Jersey. I'm here to talk in regard to the support of um, Mr. Lamar Maxson, as well as Frank Tidwell. Again, fine gentleman. I think that basically, they are all both have given much to the city, and they need to be acknowledged for what they do. In regard to the fire chief, I can't say enough. He's, he's helped me in many ways in regard to the chamber, with a variety of community activities. And um, I question him being under attack or him being displaced. I, I really do. But the man has basically shown me nothing but commitment to the city in every way, every level I know of. I've been a uh, resident of Plainfield for over 40 years. I'm a second generation entrepreneur. And so is Lamar Maxson. His father, I remember his father had a hot dog stand. <laughs> and there was a restaurant. And then much, much, much more. But that spirit flowed to his family. And his son, Lamar Maxson, basically took things to another level. He's nothing but an asset. He's, he's not only a technician. He is someone who has relationships. He is someone who has history. He is someone who is a part of the fabric of Plainfield. I, I, would have, I had made a statement before in regard to uh, uh, an issue. Who wins when Plainfield loses? And Plainfield's losing when we lose assets such as Mr. Tidwell as well as Mr. Max. 
We have this infighting which must stop. It must stop. And I have great respect for our mayor. I think he has great credentials. I think he has great command of, of finance. He is a man with many resources. But he is being advised in a, in a very wrong way. They're putting politics in ahead of Plainfield. And as a leader, we need him to bring the pieces together. That's his job. But it seems like he is being advised to do just the opposite. And displacing people who have a vested interest in Plainfield with people who have, uh, I can say, less history. That's the best I can say. This is not a racial thing. This is a political thing that should not be. We have two parts of the Democratic Party fighting as if they are enemies. We're part of the Democratic Party. What is the problem? I say to you, there's somebody who's dividing us. And who wins when Plainfield loses? People who are not Democrats, that's for sure. Because it's not new Democrats, old Democrats, it's just Democrats. Let's get this Democrat thing together, make Plainfield what it should be, because it could be a great place if we just work together. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Tom Crownover, 1112 Watch on Avenue. Uh, I'm another voice in support of Lamar Maxson. I really don't know the details of what brought this situation about. As a casual observer, though, it seems to me he does a very good job. Not long ago, I was in Park Slope, Brooklyn, and a stranger who seemed to be familiar with New Brunswick and other towns in central Jersey asked me where I was from, and I said Plainfield, and she said, I didn't think reputable people lived in Plainfield. <laughs> I think we have a failure to communicate. I think we have a problem that uh, we can do something about, and we need professional people communicating to the public what Plainfield is really all about. So, I think Lamar is a terrific asset for this community, and, uh, and he is, deserves your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Lyle Hickman, 1314 Bellevue, New Jersey. Um, I'm here speaking in support of Lamar Maxson. Um, I think we're making a grave error out of uh, truly appreciating the world of talent and how much of an asset he is to Plainfield. Born in Plainfield, raised in Plainfield, vested in Plainfield. My father and his father go back to Vietnam, you know. And um, it's just it's just sad when there's brain drain as a result of that. Like when, you know, Prophet is not respected in his own land or in his own home, Mark 6. Four, I think it might be. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just you know, it's, it's just more of like let's just look at stuff as like a chess move and look, be strategic and logical and like hold our emotions and not be personal uh, because it ain't about us. It's not about our relationships so much as it is about helping everyone out on the playing field. I like PCTV. It's fun. It's exciting. It captivates people, right? And Lamar has that appeal to cross boundaries, to reach more than one type of demographic, we're making a grave error. We do not reconsider when you're hiring this man. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, Leslie Price, Terry Class Central Avenue. Good evening. So I'm also here in support and on behalf of Lamar Maxson, who I've known for all of my adult life. And he has been glue for Plainfield, he has been an advocate for the entire community, an advocate for our children. He has been a voice that has brought politicians and community people, educators and the city. He's just done a lot in a very short amount of time that had not been done in a long time. And he also put hope and he put, he had to put, um, children back in the forefront of Plainfield, which has been uh, a suffering area for a while. Lamar and I have uh, known each other for a long time, and through our passion for children and our passion and commitment for Plainfield, 
we've done enormous, amazing things, such as taking four youth to uh, Park City, Utah, a couple of years ago for the Sunday at Film Festival. That was unheard of for Plainful to even get that kind of recognition or that kind of energy through um, the likes of Oliver Brown. Uh, Lamar and I worked on a Raising in the Sun production that was held at the YWCA. Mother's Day weekend of, I believe, 2009, was standing room only. People in Plainville don't even know that the YWCA has a theater. I mean, he has been um, a reinventor, he's been a rejuvenator, and I just have no, I, I can't believe this, we're all in here like this tonight, but I too was displaced by uh, Plainville School District a couple years ago. And it's, of course, not a good feeling, but when it happens and it's not supposed to happen, it's even more uh, tragic. He's from here like I am. He was born and raised here. His children are here. His parents are here. And even when he didn't get paid to do the job that he is now not in, he was doing it and did a wonderful job. He put Plainville back on the map. That, that studio, that media center, the interns, there it's just an amazing transformation. We were on the Plainville cable station advisory board a couple of years ago. And we had to walk in and just move dust off the tables. And there were no archives or paperwork to find because it was just buried for so many years. So he's brought life back to Plainfield. He's put us back on the map in so many ways. He sleeps, breathes, eats, and probably other things, Plainfield, point four seven, And he needs to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Jordan Fields, Bassett, Bill 189, Bobby Terrence, playing for New Jersey. Uh, came here in support of Lamar Maxson. I mean, other brother alluded to um, the R&B Blues by the Park. I think that's where we met. Maybe before that, he saw us perform there, the group that we had. And he saw what he believed to be a positive representation of the city and, and what we were doing. And he broke his neck so that we could perform at that show. And we were really taken back by it because he saw that, you know, someone coming from the city of Plainfield, it, it needs to be, you need to have that support system. You need to help one another. And that's why, you know, when I know, learn his, uh, his resume and all the things that he's been a part of and what he's done with PCTV with the Around Plainfield, and I'm now watching these, these episodes with people making scrum scrumptious food that I yes. you know, <laughs> like to partake in. I didn't know about it before, you know, but, and I showed it to other people, and they're like, oh, this is your public access? Because, wow, I mean, it's, it's kind of next level. And I'm like, yeah, you know, Lamar Maxson. And then they hear that, you know, they're trying to get rid of him. I just, I, I, I don't understand it. You know, I don't know budgets and all those type of things. I'm just, I'm just here supporting the guy that's, you know, stuck his neck out and when he didn't have to, he's a stand-up guy and every time we call he answers the phone even though he does a hundred million things all the time. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I think that things should be re-looked at and moved around so that people don't get the feeling that you can, you know, be the A, a student all your life and make things happen and then just get it taken from you yes. for, you know, because of some numbers. Thank you. Not to mention he was out there today volunteering with his students to take that, uh, with Habitat and Manny. Volunteering. Not a city employee out there working. Not to mention that. Alex Delver, 123 Summit Avenue. Good evening. Good evening. I just want to add on to all the accolades that have been paid to Mr. Lamar. Lamar. There's a young man I grew knew his father for a long time, both veterans both belong to the same veteran, veterans organizations. And this young man, I've seen him grow. And I can't say enough about him. It was a shocking to me when I heard that he was no longer the person that did the video for our city. He did bring a lot here. He brought a lot of his own time. And matter of fact, it was to the point that a uh, young man mentioned that he was in New York. Well, I've been to uh, Mount Vikings in New York, and someone knew Mark, knew Mac Mark, uh, Max from New York. I was talking about Plainfield. He said, you know Lamar? I said, oh, yeah, I know him. I know his dad. This man, if we don't bring him back, we are doing a disservice to Plainfield, disservice to its citizens. And like the lady said uh, earlier, we need to come together. This is one Plainfield. There's no new Democrats. 
there's only Democrats. There is no new uh, Republican. There's only one Republican. And we need to learn to come together, work together, and be a family because we can't grow this way. We are so divided right now. One person over here, one person over there. We are so divided until we do not know which way to go. Is it a favoritism over here? Is a favoritism over there? We need to come together. We need to bring the one maximum back now, not tomorrow, but right now. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. How you doing? I'm Kyle, Kyle Rollins, 936 Kensington Avenue. Um, I just want to say I'm an intern of Lamar's. Uh, I started two weeks ago. I'm also a journalist from News 12, New Jersey. And I'm born and raised in Plainfield, New Jersey. I love this town, but uh, you know, the media growing up in this town, um, you can tell people you're from Plainfield and they're not from Plainfield. There was always a, always a stigma that goes with being from Plainfield. There's always been a, mis uh, there's been mis a misrepresentation about Plainfield within the media. And working for News 12, New Jersey, every story that comes from Plainfield is always something very negative, <coughs> whether it's murder, foreclosure, anything. Um, and I've always wanted to do work with Plainfield, especially uh, media production. And so when I met Lamar a few weeks ago, I told him, I told him exactly what I wanted to do. And just watching him, I see that he's passionate about Plainfield. He loves the city just, just like I do. And PCTV, everything that's produced from PCTV is positive. And gives not just the town, but the rest of New Jersey uh, and the rest of the internet, um, just kind of shows people what exactly Plainfield has to offer, and there is positivity coming out of this town. And so working with PCTV, I really want to be able to produce positive pieces within my town. I love the city, and I also want to be able to try to implement that within News 12 New Jersey as well, because there's so much positivity coming out of this town, and um, I just think it's, it's a shame that uh, I'm trying to get rid of Mr. Maxim. He has so much to teach us interns, and uh, there's so many years of experience. I'm a young filmmaker and journalist, and um, I have a lot of respect for this man. And uh, just. Even though I met him a couple weeks ago, he's, he's taught me a lot already, and um, I just I just think uh, you need to rethink the decision, and uh, because he has too much to give to this town, and getting rid of him would be the service, and uh, we don't need that, especially the youth in this town. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much. Are there are there any other interns here, under Lamar? Stand please. That's our youth, they are future guys. Yes, uh, my name is Kenneth Childress, I represent the Plainfield Fire Officers. And I just wanted to speak on Ordinance MC 2014-4. And we would just like to know our objection to having mandatory uh, direct deposit. Uh, believe it or not, every employee doesn't have a bank account. And for other personal reasons, employees would not like to to have their paychecks mandatory um, direct deposit for various reasons. And we would just like to object to that uh, that ordinance being mandatory and leave it optional the way it's always been. Thank you. Nancy Jordan, 1440 Lombard Avenue. Retired. So I can come to the mic now. <laughs> but I just want to continue with Lamar Maxson. Everybody has said the right things about him. I agree with everything they said. I just want to make sure that what I believe is there's enough blame all around this room. Because I watched for weeks where the council wanted to cut the mayor's budget, particularly to get rid of the public information officer. And it was hammered in, hammered in. You finally did it. And so Lamar's fallout is political fallout. But what he's done for these kids, I've invited him at the last minute to come and uh, speak to my children at Youth Exposure for the Police Athletic League. And he came, had a drop of the dime, no agenda, just came with his equipment, and he exposed those kids to a new side of media. Kids got to interview, they got to show, uh, shoot the film, they got to edit, they got to write script. They did all of this in about two hours. And it was just a taste, but this is the kind of person that gets penalized 
behind mm. the domino effect. And I certainly know how people that deal with the children in Plainfield are treated. I've had that personally. You know, and we just don't treat our people who live here, dealing with our children, trying to do the right things for our kids, and you just treat them like trash. It's not right, and it's not right all around. So I just want the blame to be shared. All right, it's not all just mere bad. Thank you. Thank you. Any more for privilege on the floor? Seeing none, you know, okay. I have a motion to close. Oh, sorry, this is the right. Maybe I can speak from here. Can you hear me? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> but the good Lord keeps me here because he knows that I'm a good person. <laughs> but I haven't finished the job. And I don't need, you know. But at any rate, I'm here. Bob Darden is the name. I live at 1010 Oak Lane. Don't know where that is. Just keep right on up the street out here. Watch out. Past Woodland, about three or four blocks, and the street is right on the left hand side. Third house on the block. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't know, I forget what night it was, but I was watching television and I saw a group of you at this meeting, and you're talking about getting rid of somebody, or you're not going to pay this or you're not going to pay that. Well, I used to come to the council meetings, like, and I used, to, I, thought I, I used to be president of the Board of Education here. So I like to do my work. In fact, my profession, my profession, well, my profession was education. I was in there for 41 years. I was also a musician for 17, no, for 20, for 17 years. And I crossed over to just keep my head going into the education because I could see the way we were acting, adults that is. And my parents would say to me, you are going to college. And believe it or not, I did. And like the gentleman, one of the gentlemen said, he's the only one that graduated from college. Well, out of four children in my family, I was the only one that graduated. We all had a chance. My father went to Rutgers. But I kept on going, and that's why I'm still here today. And I'm thankful for that. And the thing that gets me is this. Uh, there's someone, I don't know the person, who the president or, is trying to get to work in a position here. And from the, they were talking about the, the job pays $80,000 a year. I said, I'm not 80000 Well. It's a big job, too. It's a big job. <clears throat> well, I've been looking through some of my papers at home over the weekend. Over the weekend. And I was looking at it, and I see, because I used to come to the meetings, I'd write my stuff up, ask questions. And do you know, I'm looking here at the Recreation Department, job descriptions. Back in, um, what, I guess back in, 2012, a person had a job, and they started, I guess, at $50,845 in 2011. The, the price went up to $51,814 in 2012. Am I looking at the right thing? No, because it's... Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. The job started at $94,000. 94700 That was in 2011. Okay. I make a motion to continue. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. Any opposed? 
And the extension motion carries. Thank you. Okay. In 2010, the job is paying 94700 In FY11, 2011, the job is paying 96328 And in FY of fiscal year 2012, the job went up to $99,728. And you mean to tell me if there's a person that can do a job, you're not going to recognize the person? Do you, have you seen the job description? What is the education of that individual? Because Plainfield has run through so many people in finance and everything else in the city that the state even put a thing out. If you don't hire somebody in that physical, that physical, you know, physical area, we are going to uh, charge you on a daily basis. So you better do that because I'm telling you now, they really went through I don't know what. And I had a thing that I had worked, worked on, and I called it Bumps in the Road of the present administration. $275,000. Chief Santiago battled with the mayor and the assemblyman. And what happened? They went to court. In March of 2006, the Plainfield mayor, uh, mayor improperly moved the police chief, Santiago, from his post in mid-February and ordered that the chief be reinstated to his job immediately. Now, $275,000, that's a lot of money. But who did anything about it? I don't know whether you people know about it or anything, but this was in the paper and everything else, because I don't make things up. Uh, the other thing is that uh, our taxes keep going up. In fact, I have a paper here. I think I have it. Uh, I, well, I do have it here. I brought it with me because I'm going to speak later on. I've been working on four foreclosures since night from 2011 until uh, May, because June starts another shift as far as I'm concerned. And in other words, in that period of time, we have lost almost a thousand four, four, four Wow. And in reading from the paper, because you have to read what you're trying to do, and it took a lot of time, I would have to read the paper, particularly on Monday. Why? Because Plainfield is in the paper on Monday, near the end of the paper. They have four closures. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Thank you. But I'll finish with that. <laughs> Incidentally, I called the city hall today to get one of these, and they weren't ready. Did you people get one at home? <laughs> you did? I was told they were not ready. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, when they're ready, give me a call. And I'll jump in my car. Well, not jump in the car. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll bring my wife down there, and she'll go up the stairs and whatnot, and she'll get me an agenda. So now here I am, and I got the agenda. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any more for privilege at the floor? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close privilege at the floor? No. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any extension? Motion carries. I'd like to say that uh, I, I know I missed the uh, part where the, uh, the uh, filming of the council meetings was being discussed, but the mayor has indicated that the council agendas and the council meetings will continue to be filmed as usual. I'd like to also say that one of the things that, that uh, precipitated the, the media reduction of staff was a cut of $170,000 to the budget. while. Um, it was hurtful to, to make the cuts to, to some. It was a necessary thing for the, the city to do with the budget that we had to work with. Everyone won't agree with that, but the decision of the administration to address address it this way was, of course, a decision they could make. We also no longer have a PIO. 
So I need to, to point that out too. The council was very clear on the position of the PIO, and we've addressed that as the council. PIO, what's the PIO? Public information okay. officer. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Taylor. With all due respect, I'm sorry, Mr. Smiley. With all due respect, that's incorrect information. With the budget that the council passed, the only uh, amounts of money that was taken out of the budget was the was the money for the public information officer. The amount of money that was placed in the budget was the same amount of money with a little bit more of the budget from last year, which funded Mr. Maxson's position. The, the P, and the P, also, I, I would know. like to say, as far as the council is concerned, we want to do whatever we can do to bring Mr. Maxson back. You know, I think it was a bad decision. I think it was a political decision, and I know for myself that that money is there. I went line for line. Mr. Maxson's salary reflects the 2014 budget. It do reflect the 2014 budget. If you go down item to item, it's, it's by each person's to, name, to their, their salary to is there. Yeah. Their yeah. salary is there. I even, I even urge the council, maybe we, I don't know how much funds we have in our, our budget, but maybe we can try to bring Lamar back as a consultant with our budget until administration get it together. Because the money is there. It's a travesty what you did to Mr. Maxson. I don't know if you watch PCTV, but I do. I mean, he has, did you hear, did you see right here in Plainfield with the restaurants? Did you see Plainfield Spotlight? This man does a tremendous amount of work through volunteerism. He does not get paid overtime for the work that he do. But what I'm saying to you, we, we're the council, urge administration to take a look at that budget clearly and bring Mr. Maxson back. His money, stop trying to manipulate the, the public. The monies were in the budget. The monies are in the budget. You know and I know. The monies that we, that we took out the budget reflects the salary of the public informational officer. The public and like you said, she's gone. No but Lamar's reason. money is still there. And, the and I, I, I urge the administration to stop playing politics on the backs of our children. I'm tired. And we're the only ones not playing politics. Okay, we, this politics being played both ways. I understand that. Talk. But at the end of the day, this was a bad cut. This is reflecting playing field. This man, you talk about rebranding? He has rebranded Plainfield in a positive way. And I That's urge so administration to work with the council. We're willing to work with we're going to take the gloves off here. We're willing to work with you to do whatever we need to do to bring Lamar back. We will, we the council, I'm speaking for the council and I'm sure everybody else here, we stand on our word. This is our word. We're going to do whatever it takes to sit down with you. I'll sit down with you and the rest of the council and the rest of the administration to see what we can do to bring Mr. Maxson back immediately. But in the meantime, whatever money we have in the budget as council, what can we do so that this man continue to have a salary? I'll give up Atlantic City. I'll give that up. I'll give it up for this man. And I do want to say also that the public, I thank you for coming forward like you are. And I think it was a Miss Jones or something that said blame all around. You are misinformed, uh, Miss Jones. I think that's your name. And we tired them because this is political fallout. This is called dirty politics on the backs of our children. And we are not going to tolerate it. That's what this is. And I can say that I'm retired too. But I am never going to be be in a position where I don't stand up for what is right. And I'm telling you, wait, I'm not trying to get applause here, but I'm saying that don't try to put us all in the same boat. I am not, I, we have worked with our mayor, we have given him most of the appointments that he has wanted. I'm sick and tired of people who are part of the, quote, new Dems, coming up and saying that the council is to blame. I am not to blame. I have tried to work with our mayor. We have attempted to do what is right. Most of what he has requested, we have given him. But we are taxpayers, two cents, 20 cents, five dollars, a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, going up in our taxes is not acceptable. It sends a bad message. And that is what the council did. We tried to keep the money, the budget down. We are not trying to do anything to hurt Plainfield. We're trying to bring it up. 
I'm sick and tired of folk who have personal agendas coming before the mic as if they represent the regular people. You represent vested interests. And I don't have a problem with if you're playing that game, play it. But don't try to pretend like you're just a regular citizen who doesn't care so much about Plainfield. We have said we have an ordinance, residency ordinance. I have pushed it and pushed it, and I have seen this administration ask for all of these waivers, 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 until I got sick of it. And I said, this is not acceptable. We are never going to build Plainfield if we don't look for talent within our city. This is an abomination. This young man is not only talented, he's committed, and everybody's talking about this tonight. That was a dirty blow on the backs of our children. And so, yes, I'm going to fight with the council. We'll meet with you. We'll do whatever it takes. But that was a dirty blow. That was a real dirty blow to do this on the day after the election. So, in, so disrespectful, not only to his family, to the work that he has done, and to those of us who are on this council. I am appalled at this, that the administration that had the gall to be so demonstrative and so destructive to the life of someone, our family, and of those who have worked with us in our city. Now, I'm not always right. I try to be honest and open. And I'll do that as long as I'm on the council. But I tell you, this was a dirty, down low blow. And we're not going to tolerate it. If we got to march around city council or city hall like we used to do, we may have to do that all. Whatever it takes so they get the message, there are some things that are sacred. And our children, our young people who walk in this town, go away, do very well, come back with all the tools and the commitment, and if you treat them like this, that's a blow to the playing field. And when you have all these high-powered folk who don't even live here, and no offense to you professionals, especially the gentleman that went to police, you were doing an outstanding job, sir. So I'm not talking about everybody. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm talking about what is ours. Our young people who have done well, and it is upsetting for us to treat them like this. It's a poor example of leadership, and we've got to do something. I'm so sorry for getting on my soapbox. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, I get, is this thing working? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's working. Okay, I'll just hold it. So, uh, I have to divulge a secret. I'm a supporter of Mayor Mapp. His cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> now. I don't agree with everything that Mayor Mapp does. And I didn't agree with every, a lot of what the previous mayor did, and even the person who got me into politics, Al McWilliams. I occasionally disagree with him also. I think, and, and these comments are, are, are mainly for the council. It, I mean, citizens have every right to come up and express their displeasure any decision of the council or the mayor. But to my colleagues, we have a separation of powers. Our job is to strike the budget. We struck the budget. We cut money out of the budget. There's no way that somebody wouldn't have been, or, or at least probably at several positions, wouldn't have been eliminated. So someone would have been hurt by that. And that's the, that's the way the world works, that every government is faced with those decisions and makes those decisions right. because we have to balance the needs of employees with the needs of taxpayers. That's the way it works. So what I'm hearing tonight from the public is, yeah, maybe you agree with that, but you didn't want it to be Lamar. And I respect everybody for saying that. And I'm glad from Lamar that he got so much support from the community, which is well deserved. But this is these are decisions that have to be made. So maybe if a different decision was made, Someone else would have been let go, and maybe they would have rallied their friends. They would have come here and expressed their displeasure, and maybe some council members would have rallied behind them. That's the way things seem to be. But that's we, we should just try to take a deep breath, all of us, and think this through. It's more than just emotion here. This is not emotion. Please, I'm, don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. Okay. So, I also want to say, for whoever made the comment about Chief Tidwell, is Chief Tidwell still an employee? Yes. Okay, so I, so that's the first I heard that. I'm going to consider that a rumor until I hear something that's substantial that tells me otherwise. 
And I think that the council should not engage in discussion about that. The only thing the council should do is say to the administration, please tell us what's going on, mm -hmm. and make this a private discussion. This is not a public discussion. So anybody can come to the microphone and spread rumors. That's your right. But we should not respond to that except to say, we will find out. That's all we should do. And we should end that discussion right now until we can get in private and find out if there's any truth to it. Well, um, Council Ms. Stewart, with all due respect, I just want to go back to the budget. No, I, there's one more thing I want to say. Okay. For, all the, for, the, for the few people that railed against the New Democrats, the, the real question now is, and I'm not talking to Council, I'm talking, I'm talking to people in the public, public, members of the public. The question is not, do the New Democrats, I'm a New Democrat, do we have the right to run candidates against the party in the primary? Absolutely. That's why we have President Obama. That's the way it works. The real question is, do we come together after the primary? Do we come together after the primary as Democrats? We have every right to have New Democrats in this town, and I'm proud to be one. But do we come together after the primary? So based on tonight, and I'm looking at several people in the audience, and I'm looking at my colleagues, it doesn't look like we're coming together, and all the people that are complaining that we're not coming together, you don't act like you're coming together, so I hope we can all start doing that now. Thank you. Councilman George, I just want to address the uh, budget situation. With all due respect, you're, you're totally incorrect. As we did make cuts to the budget in the media department, we specifically took out the amount of money that was added to the media budget added to the media budget for a specific public information officer position. It was an additional funding that was added to the budget for that position. There was no other monies taken out the media. So that, I want, I want that on the record. That is incorrect information. <coughs> that position, that money for Lamar Maxson still sits in the budget. And again, if we want to come together, let's come together and rally together to get Lamar back in. He's an asset to the city of Plainfield. If we want to recess and go behind closed doors and talk about this, let's do it. Because this is bad politics on the backs of our residents and our children who, have, who looks up to Lamar. I'm sorry that the mayor is not here, but my city administrator, you're here. So we, want, we need to work this out. We need to work this out. Mr. West, I'm pleading to you guys. I'm pleading to you guys. Let's work this out. And in the meantime, what monies do the council have in their budget? Like the monies that we go loud and gag into Atlantic City. What monies do we have in the budget that we can use to uh, bring Mr. Maxson back as a budget consultant? I mean, as a consultant, a media consultant, until we can work something out with administration. Because the money's there. Stop saying, and, and as one person said, blame is everywhere. Myself as the president, I will take blame if it's something that we did that was wrong. But we specifically took out the money, and I want to make this clear, that the administration put in the budget for the public informational officer position. No extra money was taken out of the media. So I just want to make that clear. How much money do we have? We currently have 4,500. <laughs> 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 what about council? I know we all work here. Why don't we, maybe we give back our salaries? I mean, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes think to bring this man back. I think the administration, I think your initial response was correct in that if they're willing to work with us, that we should be able to talk with them about this behind closed doors. And uh, I think that's appropriate um, to do that if that's something that they were willing to do. But you don't owe it to us. You owe it to the residents. You owe it to the more gentlemen. You owe it to the residents. You owe it to the more and that's really 
that, that I think is it's not, absolutely like, that, that is not the way the administration is going to be doing business. Like, we're not going to well, what kind of business are you doing? Because the business that you're doing and that you have been doing thus far is we're detrimental to the city of Plainfield. We are not going to go into a recess and, and make an administrative decision tonight on a position that is clearly the prerogative of the administration. It is the prerogative of the administration. But, but at the end not, of the day, Mr. Smiley, I understand that it's a prerogative of the administration to go in and cut Mr. Maxson. But what we're begging right now as a council to reconsider and bring him back. You might not be begging, but I am. I'm asking you to, to um, talk to your mayor and all the other people that's involved and see where you can bring Mr. Maxson back. That's all we're asking. Our, our mayor is available to everybody to have a discussion with. Is that right? Any member of the city council could have a discussion with the mayor at any time that they like. What I can't do is go back and make a decision for the administration at this time that affects personnel decision. Not, I, not only can I not do it, I won't do it. That's not appropriate for you to do it, I don't think, sir. Yes, but I do not. feel that the uh, council at the appropriate time very soon can uh, set, up, set up a meeting with you uh, concerning this and perhaps Mr. Ron West as well to to see what can be done and I think that is very appropriate and I would like to offer that suggestion. And we are certainly always open to meet okay. with, with council members. Sooner than later because see what, what happens is is that we say we're going to meet and <laughs> the meetings never take place. This 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 is not something that's, as, as somebody said this is not going away. This is not going to be swept under the rug and in the meantime you have, well, I know as far as Lamar's character, Plainfield won't suffer because he's a man, he's, he's a man of character. So he will continue to do the work as he has been doing, volunteering. So, but in the meantime, he has a family too. So, again, I don't want us to just say that we're going to meet tonight just so everybody can be satisfied and walk out of here. Okay, it's not going away. I, I just want the administration to know that it's not going away. Thank you. Moving right along, I turn it over to um, uh, Ms. Greaves. Consideration of the public hearing on second reading and final passage. Resolutions, new business, the legislative body. A, excuse me. A, Consumania resolution authorizing approval of applications based on findings and determination for issuances of searching bingo and raffle, raffle licenses as approved by the police director, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Theta Omega chapter by the city clerk. Councilor Parkinson, would you read the letters and ask if there any comments on them? Quicker that way. Okay. Are there any comments on letter A? No. No. B? No. 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 Any consensus to move it to the agenda? Yes. Do I have consensus to move item no. A to the agenda? Yes. Do we have consensus to move column B? Yes. Letter yes. B to the, do we have consensus to move? Letter C to the agenda? Yes. Yes. Do we have consensus to move letter D to the consent to the agenda. to the agenda for next week? Yes. City Alcoholic Beverages Establishments will expire on June 30th, 2014 by law. All liquor establishments must possess a clearance certificate issued by the State Division of Taxation and must pay the required state and municipal fees prior to renewal. In addition, it has been a customer, customary for the governing body to request recommendations for renewal by the Police Division, Inspections Division, Fire Division, and Health Division. 2014 through, 24, through 2015 Social Club Renewal. The following social clubs establishments have paid the required state and municipal renewal fees and have also been granted clearance for renewal 
by the State Division of Taxation. The Police Division, Fire Division, Health Division, and Inspectors Division have set forth no objections for renewal. Letter E, Council Resolution. I'm going to just read the first one and then all the others will follow. Thank you. Council Resolution authorizing renewal of a certain social club license for 2014 through 2015. License term commonly known as Club Cosmo, trading as Club Cosmo, located at 1209-1215 South 2nd Street, license number 2012-31-038-001. Yes. yes. Move to the agenda for next yes. week. Yes. Um, letter F. Yes. yes. The Mohawk Lodge. Yes. yes. And Temple Stone. Oops. Temple Stone Square Lodge, located at 722 St. Mary's Avenue. Yes. Yes. H. Giovanni's. Yes. Yes. M. I. Yes. Trifecta Restaurant Holding. Yes. yes. J. Ferrans Nightclub. Yes. Yes. K. Palacio Latino Corp. Yes. L. Enterprises LCC Trading as Hugo's. Yes. M. Latino Heat Sports Bar and Grill. Yes. N. George and Sofia. Mazzaria, trading as Latino Co. Yes. Yes. O. Bama, in. I have a question. Yeah. Is our board directors here and our lead person for these inspections? So, in, in previous years, La Bamba had a, a, a lot, I guess mm -hmm. that's putting it mildly, a lot of um, public. Um, disorderly conduct violations. In our packet, we got all these reports that had to do with code violations and other kinds of technical violations, but I, in my packet, I didn't see any report on police activity. And that's, I find that to be a, a problem in approving these licenses. And I'm bringing it up for this one, because this is one, this is one that was um, it stood out because it had a lot of violations. It was on, this was one of the ones that I call um, a club or a bar that's using the police department as, as its private um, security force and the taxpayers are paying for it. So I just want some assurance that this is not true anymore or that I want to know if it is. Good evening. Uh, Detective Carvalho, Plainfield Police. Um, I was actually assigned to do these investigations in terms of uh, our liquor license renewals. Um, I don't have the paperwork with me for that particular establishment, um, but I can tell you from recollection that we, we did um, refer for approval on behalf of the council. Um, with every liquor license renewal inspection that was turned over to the city, to city hall, um, I gave a breakdown of every call for service uh, for that for that particular establishment. Uh, so for every establishment in the city, you should have got a breakdown of how many incidents were were called into 911. If there were any major any major uh, criminal activity and so and so forth. But in we terms didn't, of we didn't get it. At least some of us here. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't get it, and other council members did not get that. In previous years, we got it. And in, in a couple of cases, it led to us putting, calling for a hearing and putting conditions on an establishment that was clearly a location where there were frequent public disturbances in, in the bar and on the street, and the police were there all the time. And for all of the you know, demands for police service that we have in the city, we should not be wasting a lot of time 
policing these bars. We should just be clamping down on them and not just approving their license. Yes. Well, um, I certainly agree with you. I would imagine that our director also agrees with you, as well as the command staff, because it does take up a lot of resources. I can certainly um, run those numbers again for the council, should you, yes. should you need it. But it's, um, like I said, each bar had a packet about this thick. It took me months to put together. Council uh, President, for the ones that did not receive it, I will make sure we do receive them. Yes. Thank you. I have it in my possession. Okay, so. Moving these to the agenda is, is, is fine as long as we get them and if, there, if there's serious offenders, I think the, the police department and the administration should be prepared to discuss mm -hmm. that with the council. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a business meeting, we're trying to buzz through the agenda, this is too important. Yes. Hello, bro. We, we certainly have the information. I'll make sure you do. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should we move the agenda? We could always move it next week, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I want to single anybody out because I don't have any facts. Right. So I think we either move them all or move them all. I think we should do that. We definitely have to. Okay, we'll move them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 P. Pringdu Enterprises. Trading in South Avenue Liquors. Yes. 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 Okay. Melon Inc. Trading and Station Liquors. Yes. Yes. R. Uh, Jersey Liquors Trading as Queen City Liquors. Yes. Yes. S. M. H. V. H. P. Corp. Trading as Rick's Wine and Liquor. Yes. 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 Josh Yugi Inc. Trading as Ben Franklin Liquors. Yes. 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 Adrena Torres Inc. Trading as San Homo Liquors. Yes. 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 Sherry Preview. <laughs> Trading as Pickwick Liquors. Yes. yes. Corporation Council wants to address that. Okay. Uh, on W, uh, the following uh, license has been recommended for denial by the police division. Um, a question had come up, what is the status of the um, pending appeal from last from year? State, yes. Right, exactly. And that, um, they're awaiting a decision at this uh, at this time for um, the from the administrative law court from last year. So the hearing was completed. Uh, we're awaiting a decision from the judge at this point. So instead of not renewing, can we just wait for the decision of the state from the state? Um, you have the prerogative to do that. Um, you could still deal with this uh, issue of non-renewal independently for this year uh, as well. But there's, but if you prefer, of course, to await the decision and see how that. Um, Shakes out, then I guess you can absolutely you can you can hold off and not put it on the agenda. It's up to each individual council person. Right. I'm sure that they've had a number of calls there also, but um, they also took some of the recommendations of the council members and put surveillance cameras and so on and so forth. But um, I would choose to wait until a pending investigation from the state. But I'm just one vote. Um, so council members, um, well, it was actually a decision that we're waiting for, a judicial decision on, on right. last year's. And this this um, uh, application is, the, the question becomes, is it a resolution authorizing for the non-renewal of a certain, right. so you can deal with those issues on the pending application as well, if you wish. So, and I would also like to get more information, like you said, and that would, you know, guide on decisions, I think, more effectively. Is there any downside to us um, passing this resolution while we're waiting? For no, the I, first think, I think decision? we can put it on the agenda and, and, and deal with it. As, you know, if you if you wish, uh, this is a current. This is for this application. The the decision is based on a denial of an old uh, of an old application. And, and would, it, would an action on this one affect the state no. ABC board's no. decision on the previous one? It wouldn't. No, because because that case has already been heard. And we're just awaiting a decision. You know, okay, so this is, this is one where I did get some information in the packet that influenced me. What I read was that there were three or four instances where we discovered um, 
illegal drugs mm -hmm. stashed inside the establishment. And this is right. after we and recommended them for non-renewal. Oh, wow. And again, you may wish to deal with that. And, I think and it was heroin and, and ice cream. Could you, could you just come to the mic and explain? <coughs> Absolutely. Um, I actually testified at the administrative <coughs> hearing in reference to what you're discussing. Um, the police department, or at least our request for the denial going forward, is not solely based on the hearing that's taking place. Certainly, we're, we're still, in this current year, still having the same issues that we had in previous years. Um, a lot of drug activity, uh, weapons, so on and so forth. And uh, just to give you guys somewhat of a comparison, uh, for this year alone, that which has not expired, it won't expire until obviously June 30th, but as of a month ago when I did these statistics, we've had 80 incidents at that location thus far for the year. Um, I know that sounds an, as an extreme number, but just in comparison, just so you have a better um, understanding of what that means, directly across the street from this establishment is a bar. Maybe 150 feet, the Golden Anchor, I'm sure you've all seen it, it's on the corner of Clinton and um, Front. They've only had 37 incidents, and they're a bar. That served, that served alcohol as a whole, you know, in comparison to a distribution facility where you buy liquor to take home. This facility actually has drinking on premise, and they only have 37 incidents. So, um, obviously, when you look at in terms of incident, there's always a dollar figure associated with that because that, that requires police response, EMS, fire, or whatever the case may be. So, Thank you. You're very much. So, so I, I, mean, I recommend that we join all of this conversation. Yes, exactly. And I would ask the police director, please uh, talk to your people. I mean, they're doing a fine job on this, but when, when you say only 37 violations in January, I mean, that, that in the police world, that might be okay, but the rest of us residents, we, we don't like it. <laughs> W. W. Yeah. M. Council Maniac resolution authorizing the non renewal of a certain planetary retail distribution license for 2014 through 2010 license term, commonly known as Nakin's Inc., trading as Arlington Liquors, Clinton Valley and Wall Yes. 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 The following establishments have either not paid their required state and municipal renewal fees, have not been granted clearance for renewal by the State Division of Taxation, or require a special ruling. Action need not be taken until such time as the applicable matters have been resolved. Yes. 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 Consensus to put this on the agenda? Yes. 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 There's no action. No, there's no action. No action to be to taken to because there's, yes. they have not there's no action. Yes. We, they put it on so that you would be aware of it. Yeah, they did. They had to pay. Yes. Administrative, executive branch, none at this time. No, yes, we do. We have the councils uh, from uh, Mayor Maps for oh. his appointments mm -hmm. that he recommended. And if I have consent from the council, we will add that to the agenda. Yes. Yes. And that is the, that's the names of the, the nominees to serve on the Plainfield Cultural and Heritage Commission. Yes. <coughs> Department Corporation Council. We had uh, only the one item to add to the, uh, that we discussed in the executive session, and that was the um, Zazara versus City of Plainfield uh, workers' compensation matter. Um, 
in the amount of that is there's a proposed uh, judgment of a settlement there in the amount of fourteen thousand two hundred and ten dollars and we ask for a consensus that be added to the agenda yes 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 thank you um, department of administration and finance Resolu i'm going to read the first one resolution authorizing the approval for the acceptance of fiscal grant extension from january 1st 2013 through June 30th, 2014, from the Union County Department of Human Services Division of Planning for the impl implementation of the Plainfield Municipal Alliance programs in the amount not to exceed $51,187. Yes. Yes. Okay, why? Resolution authorizing for overpaid taxes. Yes. Yes. Resolution. Res resolution for a refund due to state tax appeal in the amount of two thousand four hundred and seventy-two dollars and six cents. Yes. Resolution authorizing flexible spending, including the Internal Revenue Service notice, which relaxes. The use of its loose rule. Yes. Yes. Z2. Yes. Z3. Yes. Yes. Z4. Yes. Yes. Z5. Yes. Yes. Z6. Yes. 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 Hold on, um, Council President, I'm just made aware that uh, uh, the administration has. Yes, that's what we were just discussing. <laughs> we, we discussed with Council President earlier about this where you said the administration of finance wanted to add to the agenda. We would do it at, at this juncture. Please, further. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Council. Good evening. The first resolution uh, that we're requesting to add is to amend the municipal budget, the you know, 2014 municipal budget, due to additional grants that have come in. Yes. For those of you who have been around, it's called the Chapter 159 resolution, and we've got $414,527 worth of grants that we want to amend the budget and recognize. The second item is a modification to the 2006 UCIA you know, or Union County Improvement Authority agreement that we entered into back uh, in September of 2006. You know, we have not sought any reimbursements from the county since 2010. We, have, we need to make some amendments in order to pursue that. And we've got several hundred thousand dollars worth of reimbursements we would like to recover from the county. So that is, in essence, the purpose of that particular resolution. Thank you. Just got good news from Trenton. Um, our public works director, Eric Jackson, just won mayor in Trenton. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad news because we're losing them, but it's great news for Trenton. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Z Z six. Did you want us to label those two additions yes. as Z Z five A Z five B? Yes. So you don't have to repeat. Thank you. Z five A Z five B. Yes. 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 Continue on Z six. Yes. 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 Z7? Yes. Z8? Yes. Z9? Yes. Z10? Yes. Z11? Yes. And now the Department of Public Works and Urban Development, Z12. Let me just read the very first one. 
resolution authorizing the continuation of management services for the Brownfields program for additional support services in the amount not to exceed five thousand eight hundred and sixty-two dollars and fourteen cents. Yes. Okay, Z thirteen. Um, just a, a comment. This is this is the uh, Union County College is developing the uh, the pool property, and they're going to go ahead with that. So that, even though Roosevelt Avenue is a fairly newly paved street, and we hate to see that street cut up, yes. the planning board unanimously supports their proposal to do it because this is this is a crosswalk. Students have to safely cross Roosevelt Avenue, and they're going to put in a highly visible crosswalk, and I think there's going to be some underground wiring because we're asking them to put some some safety lights in place so the students can cross safely. It's a it's a big plus for Plainfield that they're developing the property. Thank you. This is on Z13. Yes. yes. Uh, if I may, uh, good evening, uh -huh. Council. My name is Anthony Peter Paul. I'm here on behalf of Union County College. In case there are any questions about that, uh, thank you. In case there are any questions about that, uh, the resolution, I do have with me the, the architect and our, uh, the associate director of facilities for Union County College. If there are any questions about the proposed project, you're talking about the project. Well, no, it's actually it is the underground, the trenching for the underground data line. All right, now in the replacement of the street, we just spent a whole lot of money doing that street. And we would like to see it neatly done. Just say yes. I have to very quickly, not take yes. more than 30 seconds. Originally, initially we were considering on directional bore, which would have been less disturbing than the trenching, but I understand that existing material in that area is clay. And so the, uh, the second option is infrared patching. Um, which is a seamless type of patch repair to the roadway. We'd still be doing the trenching, but the final product would be patched with an infrared uh, machine. Uh, you would not see any saw cuts, in other words. Oh, well, I hope not, because everybody says you will not see. But after our roads have been done and we have paid. You may see discoloration because it'll be a new asphalt compared to what's existing, and you'll have the wear of the road that was paved, I guess, what? How long two years. Was it your, uh, two years. Yeah. Okay, so you'll see a discoloration, but you will not see saw cuts. Could you smooth it out so that you see it as least as possible? We could try to feather it. That's what you're talking about. Oh. Typically, the trench width will be about four feet wide. Yeah, we'll go know. beyond that to create a better transition. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, I, 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 I like the improvement, but I also. You know, it's hard for to see that once our streets get done, the minute we get them done, then they, you know, they turn around and being destroyed, and we are paid, you know, millions of dollars to get them done. We, we share this township's concern, and our, our concern is after we do the infrared patching, there's nothing to say that PSC and G or one of the utility companies. But well, well, we're going to do whatever is required of us. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank we respect this town. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, Mr. Boucher. I'm Z14. Yes. Could, could we get a brief explanation of what's included in that proposal for streetscape? Mr. Boucher? Because that was a question that came up from uh, one of the people at the top of the microphone. Mr. Boucher, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Well, what's in, what, could you describe very briefly what's in, what's included in the streetscape proposal for North Avenue? Yes. Improvement project. It's a Z14. 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 Z14
It's bisected by Gavin. All right, terrific. Then. Well, we can hope to get it. Thank you. Thank you. C15. Z16. Yes. Z17. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's it. Introduction for organisms on first reading. NC 2014-11. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 9, Article 9. Public entertainment to, add, to amend Section 3 and include Section 11A and Section 11B of the Municipal Code of the City of Plainfield, New Jersey, which is I think when I spoke to you earlier during the week, you said it was to uh, amend the entertainment um, down to one instead of two per year. Yes, yes, Council President. It was so that the uh, the businesses wouldn't have to endure more than, than one uh, intrusion on one commerce by one other company. I mean, one other agency, like having more than one fair or parade or as we're having now those functions downtown we're limiting them to one per entity so that the other businesses won't you know lose business during those periods when the streets are closed off and, and the affairs are taking place so so instead of having like three instead of one or organization or entity having three events downtown that disrupt the whole downtown uh, area or any other area we're going to limit them to one during the course of the year isn't that revenue coming into the city of Plainfield? Um, uh, the fee is twenty five hundred dollars a day, right? Well, that doesn't that doesn't limit other organizations from having it. It just keeps one organization from dominating the downtown area or any of the other lots, um, and keeping other businesses in the downtown area from actually operating properly. I think a couple of these organizations have been operating like this for a number of years. Having um, I'm speaking one um, Edison Garcia, uh, I believe he has about two fairs a year. And the other one has two. Uh, yes, and Mr. Shea Marie also. Oh yes, I, I think he has one, but mm -hmm. there's nothing precluding them from having three or four or uh, as many as they want. And this ordinance would do that. It would stop not just them. But anybody from just disrupting the downtown um, commerce for a particular fair for them. Yes, we do get some money for, for doing the fair, but uh, other businesses downtown also lose money from time to time when these fairs take place. And they come before this body and make that, that particular assertion. But everybody has to come for a full go anyway before yeah. they can have a fair or anything, correct? Right? Uh, that's true. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion. Yes. What, why don't we, um, we've got a couple of months to deal with this, I mean, if we're going to go ahead with it. So why don't we ask the, um, I mean, the, the downtown business folks who are affected by this, I mean, it, it might be to their advantage or it might not be, but let, let's hear what they have to say. Um, you know, we have, we have a SID, you know, Special Improvement District, mm -hmm. and why don't we 
bring them forward at the, uh, the next the meeting or you know yeah. before this passes yeah. so that we can we'll get some input. It's a great idea. Or we can send a word to the students so they can they have an opportunity to look at it even before they, they come before us. I'll have no problem sending this to the city. So in the meantime, can we just pull this one until we have the opportunity to hear from the, the business community? Yeah, I personally would like to sit, have to sit and come before the council yes. so we can get them on the record. I think that's a good idea. No idea. I agree with you. I'm not going to say this wrong. This clarification MC 2014 will not be added to the agenda. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> MC 2013. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 2014-12, an ordinance to amend the supplement, supplement chapter 10, morals and um, morals and conduct, article 11, smoking prohibited in municipal buildings and city agencies. Yes. Definitions of the municipal code of the city of Plainfield, in 1971. Yeah. Yes. MC 14-14, an ordinance amending Chapter 11, Personal MC 2014-13, an ordinance amending the schedule of salaries and wages adopted pursuant to Article 14. Chapter 11 of the Municipal Code of the City of Greenfield, New Jersey. Yes. 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 MC 2014-14, an ordinance amending. <coughs> pardon me. An ordinance amending Chapter 11, Personal, Article 7, Compensation and Pay Periods and creating a new section 11 colon 8 colon 7 8 entitled direct deposit of the municipal code of the city of Plainfield, New Jersey. Question. I have a question. Uh, city administrator, um, does this mean what does this mean that uh, your funds will come to direct deposit for salaries? Does it mean it's what does it mean? Sorry. It, it does mean that. What about people who don't have a uh, bank account? We actually did discuss this earlier. Um, the the people who already don't have bank accounts, we would be setting up meetings with various banks and and um, credit unions to get them to set up accounts. Now, I was under the impression this was mandatory by by the state, and it is. Uh, a law that the state has adopted, but in order for it to be enacted in Plainfield, the governing body would have to adopt this. Uh, so it can be optional. It's not mandatory. Yeah. It's so not it, mandatory it, it needs buy-in from the from the city council. So I, I would like to comment on this because we're at the place where I work. We're we're dealing with this very same issue. We have um, a lot of people on direct deposit, and then maybe like ten or fifteen percent not. It's very time-consuming and costly to, to, to deal with that. But those but there are some folks who don't want to pay bank fees, mm -hmm. and, and they, they feel like they shouldn't open an account. Mm -hmm. but, the, but there is a solution to that, and I think you mentioned it. It's credit unions. Credit unions, generally, you, you can find various credit unions that will not charge you a, a monthly fee or any transaction fees. And even if the credit union doesn't have a branch in Plainfield, there are credit unions where you could go to an ATM at a 7-Eleven or any kind of store like that and do transactions without paying a fee. So I think I, I actually think it's to the benefit of those employees because if they're going to a check cashing place, they're getting a big chunk of that taken away from them right up front. And this is a way that they could keep all the money for themselves and at the same time as save the city some time and effort. 
So right now, what happened to those people that just get a check? Is that what it is? You get a lot of checks. Cut a check, yes. and then those who have, because where I used to work, they had both. You had checks, and then you had a direct deposit. Now, I prefer direct deposit. It's a lot of advantages, but I've always had a bank account. But those people who do not, it may be of a, some sort of a hardship initially. And um, why can't we do both? That's what yeah, I, I too, if you, if you, as you uh, watched uh, firemen children's come to the mic and not supporting this um, as a union's perspective because there are actually, I received several phone calls from people stating that they do not have bank account, well they don't, do not want direct deposit. It's not that they don't have bank accounts for whatever reason, they do not want direct deposit. Well, I, I will tell you there's costs associated with the city, to the city for doing the live checks. I was trying to get, get you a, a full number on how much that is. Yeah. I, I think they told me it was uh, 51 cents a check or something. 51 cents a check? Right. Um, so uh, there is a cost to the city. It, it's really up to the governing body. I, I wish I could just tell you, oh, there's a law. We have to adopt it. And we have to go on. And we'll save this 51 cents per check. We have over 500 employees. So when we do this, um, it is a cost associated with it, but it is it's clearly up to the governing body to adopt the. Uh, I would like to see us transition into that. I actually, I I think they would like for, uh, payroll deduction. It's a lot of advantages to it, but I'm not in that situation where people don't have accounts, you know. But could we, in some way, do a dual for a season of time until we can get them more acclimated to yeah. payroll deduction or something? I I just think that. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm asking another budget person. <laughs> yeah. The answer is yes, but you would still uh, have to pass that resolution because the transition time says we're going there, whether it's three months, six months. And we do have confirmation from Affinity investors that we can get free checking for all employees. Can we, can we, we also just, have a credit union associated right. with the city, the teacher's credit union. That does the job. What I propose is that we come back to this and work with the employees and transitioning because also with it could be some people cannot get checking accounts so affinity or credit unions will not give them a checking account if they have something stopping them from getting a checking account well, I mean I'm just you know money can be garnished no matter what yeah. so. <laughs> well and the other thing council president this is the first reading I mean we have another opportunity another fight with this apple if we can just get the process started you can decide. We have we have some opportunity to, to talk to folks who will be affected by this, as well as the banks, um, just to get us started. If it doesn't work out, you know, it's two more months before um, you have to. Well, ask so when does this come into effect? What's an or Well, we're, we're proposing it as an ordinance now. This is the first reading of the ordinance. It's two readings and then 20, 20 days before. So it comes into effect in August. Yeah. And, and, and we don't have to. We don't have to put it into effect. We don't. We could. We could pass the ordinance, but make the effective date delayed by three or six months, whatever, so that the employees have a chance to get ready for it. You could educate them. You could get them to meet with the credit union. Sell them on it. They, I mean, it's a. It's a win-win. Yes. Karen. 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 Yeah. 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 Y
Do we have a yes? Yes. Thank you. No, Ms. Consul. <laughs> okay, we're at citizens' participation. Citizens are welcome to address the council on any governmental item of concern to them, whether or not it is scheduled to be on the agenda. During this portion of the agenda, a total of 60 minutes have been allocated for all public comments to be presented. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium and give your name and address to the clerk for the record. The amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time on any single speaker is allowed, will be limited to five minutes. The large groups are urged to select someone to represent them. Thank you. Seven, and John E. Pritchard, 723 Arlington Avenue, Plainfield, New Jersey. <clears throat> Two things I'd like to uh, go over with you. First, I, I urge the city council to pass a resolution to support our military forces, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Air Force, as they do their duty protecting us from the September 11th attacks. <coughs> and we must back them up in every way. We failed to do so during the war in Vietnam. Unfortunately, 16 of our guys from Plainfield did not make it back from Vietnam. The ones who did, unfortunately, were called Nazis, murderers. I'd like to see that other N-word, Nazi, be retired. <clears throat> and in their honor, I'd like to sing. They loved us so. Edward, in a hundred ways, they told us so. In honesty, <clears throat> in affection, they told us so. They loved us so. Every day in a hundred ways, they showed us so. With loyalty and bravery, they showed us so. They were our defenders, and they kept us free. They took an oath to guard us and fought for liberty. They loved us so, and we should know. For we love them so. And the other thing is that we need to reactivate Muhlenberg. We need a hospital that is second and none in every way. We need a hospital that is capable of mission, just like we need a police and fire, a police department, a fire department, rescue squads and EMSs that, that are capable of mission in serving us. I don't want to see smoke going from behind trees again like I did on September 11th. And that is why we need a hospital. We need a full service hospital. No other thing, no other thing to do. None of that apartment, apartment, uh, apartment uh, complex stuff. We need a hospital. We need it badly. We need it now. Give up on me, Lundberg? Oh, no. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. And I think we need to re reactivate Millenberg. We need that hospital. And we need it badly, as I said before. And the sooner we activate Millenberg, the better off we all will be. Do I make myself clear? Yes, John. Yes, you do, John. Very good. Thank you. Um, my name is Sandra Taylor Williams. I live at 312 New Street here in Plainfield, New Jersey. I was born and raised in this town. I love Plainfield. There's nothing wrong with Plainfield. It's just some of the people that live in Plainfield. Now, we have freedom of speech in America. I have a couple things I'd like to say. Um, people want respect. We citizens, we seniors, we all want respect. You guys up there want respect. So why is it that when we come to the mic with our questions, we cannot get answers? You give us five minutes tops to talk. We don't get any answers to our questions. We go to the departments where we have the problems. They tell us to come to council. We come to council, we still don't get any answers. And it's not right. You are the only, we are the only town that I know of they do not answer the citizens' questions. We pay our taxes. You know what? If we stop paying taxes here in Plainfield, 
Thank you, Phyllis, going to hell in the handbasket again. The town will shut down. You don't want to listen to us, but you take our money, you do with it what you want. Then you have the audacity to have private meetings about the town that we don't even know about. What's going on in the town or anything else. And all this needs to stop. Is there a law that we cannot turn this thing around, that we can get questions to our answers? Is that a written law here in Plainfield? It should be talked about or looked into or changed around or something. We need answers to our questions. We seniors have problems at the senior center with Sharon Brown. No one goes down there, but yet still when she wants to improve her, um, uh, I guess her self, she takes the entourage of people to bring to City Hall to prove that she's this. And these are the people that she has intimidated so bad. It's ridiculous. I'm going to see Mr. West tomorrow with a couple of other people about this woman. How she makes people wear badges around their necks like their dogs. How she doesn't want the other people to come in. And I understand that she gets what she wants because uh, she does favors or people, people I understand, do favors for favors. Yes, they do. Trust me, they do. And this is ridiculous. It's got to stop. The senior center belongs to the seniors, not to Sharon Brown for her to do what she wants. If you're not there to eat lunch by 12 o'clock, you don't eat. By the time the people who do go there eat 1.30, the place is clear. People go home. We used to sit there all day and have a good time with the people and laugh and have a good time. Not anymore. It's ridiculous. And there's a lot of other things that she did. When we had an election, she took charge of the ballot box. She took the ballot box. She has no business even being in the membership meeting. She took the ballot box and kept it herself and made people who had canes and walkers and things come to her and put their ballot in the box. And that was ridiculous. And I'm bringing her up on charges for that. So anybody who wants to can go and tell her, I don't care. Everybody else there seems as if they're scared of her, but I'm not. There's nothing personal between she and I. If it had been personal, I would have took care of it a long time ago. But this is about the center. It's not funny. It's not funny. I know you guys never go down there. Sometimes you don't. But as soon as she sees you come in, everything is all smiles and grins and carry on. But I have people that are coming tomorrow with, to meet Mr. West and us, and I have a whole list of the things that she has done in that center. And it's not right. She treats the people terrible. She treats them terrible. And I have some more things to say, but right now I know my time is almost up. I'll be back next week. I haven't been here in a while because of health issues, but I'll be back next week. Have a blessed day, Councilor. Thank, Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Ken Monfort, 1345 East 2nd Street, Lincoln, New Jersey. Uh, about the direct deposit. I, I do take some issue with that, merely because I've seen all too often when government, be it local or federal, uh, introduce themselves into our home, and I think everybody's paycheck is a part of their home, their stability. Uh, what is promised usually doesn't end up that way. Uh, Mr. West had said there was some communication with local banks with respect to honoring these checks for free, but it's been my experience that banks usually have, if you open an account, there is a minimum balance you must retain or maintain in order to have that free check. And so uh, I know I won't get an opportunity to talk to him after the meeting. So I wonder if that question could be answered for me. Uh, I'm astute enough to know that change is likely, regardless of personal opinions or concerns. So with respect to that, my perspective on this really has to do with making sure that those who cannot, for whatever reason, uh, maintain a checking account, savings account, whatever the case might be, for whatever personal reasons or concerns they may have, that those reasons and concerns be respected 
and understand, we have to understand. I can't tell you what to do with your paycheck, mm -hmm. and I don't feel as though you should tell me what to do with mine. I like direct deposit, but it's just not me that I'm thinking about. So if you can answer that question, that these banks will cash checks, <coughs> excuse me, from the city of Plainfield without having to honor a minimum balance in those accounts. We'll see what that goes. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say that I agree um, uh, with, with uh, Ms. Montfred. Just please let the record show that I, I think that it should be the employee's uh, choice whether or not they want direct deposit or not. So please let the record show that I'm not in favor of that. Uh, Nancy P. Mullen, 29, we're alive here. Uh, a couple of issues brought me out tonight, um, specifically the uh, liquor stores. And then when I got here, you talked about the uh, public entertainment ordinance. I've been asking for years about a nuisance uh, public entertainment ordinance. It's interesting that we're going to limit and consider limiting the businesses in town. But as a resident that lives in the West End, you should also consider we do restrict and we have to get permits for garage sales. But on the weekends in the West End of town, and I'm sure it's in other parts of town, there are family parties, and they're not just parties for confirmation, baptisms, or whatever. There are parties that go on every weekend that are public entertainment parties, as far as I'm concerned. If you live and you have to listen in your house with the windows closed, with the TV on, with the air conditioner on, and you can still hear the music, they're public entertainment. And they sh people should be made to get permits also, so that the police has more teeth to come and do that. And it also impacts what the officer said about the Anchor Bar as the 37. Um, it's a bar establishment where people are contained inside the bar drinking, okay? as to a uh, plenary license where there's more incidents outside. Because those people carry the liquor outside. They carry it to these parties that are taking place in the neighborhoods. They are also the people that are walking drunk on the streets that may have to have the police come and pick them up. And I've called more than once to try to save people's lives from getting hit by cars. In fact, I was at uh, 602 West Front Street one Sunday when a man rode his bicycle drunk into an oncoming car. And I was the only person that called the police in order to pick that man off the street. And it turned out it was, and he, was, he was drunk. He drove, and I was lucky that I wasn't the one that hit him. I heard the, the crash behind me. But the man was driving his bicycle drunk. He should have got a ticket. Instead, the poor man that hit him got the ticket. And he was at least honest and stopped. And he had nothing to do with it, in fact, that the guy hit him. So th these liquor establishments are creating more of a nuisance for our officers and for our emergency care services, for the police department, and for our citizens. So I would hope that you would look into a nuisance party ordinance. There are other towns that have instituted them. Hey, listen, I would love to have a beachfront property. I don't live at Manasquan, Belmar, or all those places, okay? I live in Plainfield. I make a motion that she uh, second. I appreciate that. Uh, any opposed, any abstentions, motion carried. I appreciate that. I just, you have to look at also the issues surrounding these bars, not just the property that they're on, but what's going on outside. And I don't know if our ComStack can handle that. But I do appreciate what the officers have done in order to make you more aware of what the issues are. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Patricia Barksdale, 614. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. And it's been a while since I've been before the council. I've just been really busy with business and family and all those other things. But there is something that brought me out this evening that I think is of great concern to Plainfield. But before I go on, I saw that you did have a resolution celebrating the life and legacy of Reverend Donald Nichols Sr. On, on the agenda. And I just wanted to say thank you from me personally, and I'm sure that there are other members of the Mount Island Baptist Church who would like to thank you also. Um, Reverend Nichols was a great treasure to Plainfield and certainly to the Mount Island family. I know that he was certainly one of my spiritual mentors for more than 40 years. 
And so I just want to say again, thank you. Uh, you know, one of the previous speakers um, <coughs> spoke about, and I didn't come here to talk about that tonight, um, about, about Muhlenberg Hospital, and I know there's been some discussion about condos and things of that nature. But I just want to speak into your hearing if there's any possible way that there can be a restoration of Muhlenberg Hospital, that would be great. Because I came, I uh, think, down uh, Randolph Road today, this evening, and the sirens were, were sounding, and the ambulance went past Muhlenberg, I guess, to go to JFK. And what that reminded me of was when my mom got sick back in February or so, and she had to go to the hospital. And uh, the EMT said the JFK was so booked, they were rerouting uh, patients to Somerset and Overlook. She went to Somerset, she stayed there. We spent 27 hours in the emergency room on a stretcher. I stayed there with her until she could find, they could find a bed for her. And there were other patients in the emergency room also. So if you have that type of overcrowding out of Somerset, and if Overlook's overcrowded, and if JFK is overcrowded, what does that mean for the people who are serviced by Muhlenberg, not just plain builders, but people in the surrounding communities as well? So I wanted to call that to your attention. I'm trying to get everything in my five minutes, OK? Because I don't know when I'll be able to come back. But the other thing, too, just to um, call to your attention, Greenberg Park. And just to revisit that, because growing up in Plainfield, Greenbrook Park was a park for the community. Mm -hmm. But as I go through there now, my heart is saddened, because if there's any way that you can um, more actively work with the count of the, um, sure. sorry, the county mm -hmm. in restoring that park, that right. park, I think that it would be great for Plainfield. I mean, the baseball leagues used to play out at Greenbrook Park. There was a bridge there, the gazebo. So many great features of that park that represented a fine Plainfield. And speaking of the finer playing field, I came out tonight to speak on behalf of Lamar Madison. I saw a post regarding uh, Lamar in his position. I'm not coming here to speak out against anyone, but to speak on behalf of what I know about Lamar and what he represents for playing field. I had the privilege of sitting on the cable television advisory board when I was set on the Board of Education. And Lamar came maybe a year or so after that. And what Lamar has done for Plainfield, I have not seen since former councilman Ray Blanco brought his media talents to Plainfield and shared them with his community. Lamar took our cable station from a cable station to PCTV. I don't know of any infractions uh, that this man has done. Uh, I'm not his supervisor. I've just seen him in the city. I watch him bring his talents and his resources, policies and procedures, and streamline and refine that board and that television station so that it represents, it puts a positive face on Plainfield, and not only that, it opens up the windows to the souls of positivity that other people don't see in Plainfield, and certainly other media outlets have not reported about Plainfield. He's taken young people like this young woman who's behind the camera over here, and brought in talent, interns. I watched him. He came with a militia, okay? He came with his artillery. And there were people and resources. And I don't know your budget concerns. Maybe with the half a million dollars, slightly less than half a million dollars, some of that money could go to help with whatever budget deficit you're experiencing. I know at one point, too, some of the um, vendors who were here in Plainfield, like the Verizons or the Comcast, they had to pay money back into the city, maybe with some type of partnership with them. I know that everyone's under budgetary constraint. But this gentleman not only represents um, homegrown talent, he represents somebody who has the talent, who has the resources. He's worked with our schools. He's done things with, I know, Paz and other um, community children in order to put a positive spin on Plainfield that other people don't see otherwise. Right here in Plainfield, that feature where you had, a, a, it, I was just really taken with that. I make a motion that she's giving me more time. Second. All those in favor, aye. Any opposed, any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you very much. I'll try to be brief. I just want to say this. I've seen over the years, 70s, 80s, the riots, many, many occasions, situations in the schools where Plainfield hasn't had a positive face. Even with some of the things that are recorded from these meetings, we always haven't had a positive face. 
people see passion, they see hurt. The work that I've seen Lamar Madison do has contributed to Plainfield having a more polished, professional, and inviting look. And I ask that whatever the concern is, aside, as I said, I'm not this man's supervisor, but what I've seen of him has been nothing but a positive effort to promote all that's good in plain glass that you reconsider. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jeffrey Dunn, 537 Belvedere Avenue, from New Jersey. Um, speaking in regard to some things that concern me, the Raritan Line Coalition, which has scheduled a meeting on June 30th, in reference to the one seat ride, is scheduled to be in Plainfield. It has been moved west. I have a question. Why? Don't know the answer. I shall know next week. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying it's, it's significant because the situation is, from a business point of view, <coughs> the ride ties in in many ways into the new development of the playing field and everything along the Rares line. And that information <coughs> needs to be shared. It has been in the West Field for a number of times. It has yet to come. We have advocated for Plainfield, and it's not coming. It's been changed in the last two, three weeks. So I think we need to find out what the situation is and get them back to have a meeting in Plainfield. Not this month, again next month. And don't let them change it. Next thing is, I'm concerned in reference to the census of ours. Census says we have 48,000. 49,800. Wow. 49,800. That's 200 people shot. We have been under 50,000 too low. And I'm not mistaken, and I would ask the um, city attorney to look into it, I think we're entitled to a waiver because of that discrepancy of 200. It's so small, it allows, I don't know, I think a waiver or a recount or something like that, but an opportunity for us to investigate, review, recount, go over, because it means too much. When Plainfield has over 50,000, it gives us access to state funds and basically override the county and frees us to resources that we have been deserving for decades. It has been denied too long. Again, who wins when Plainfield loses? I'm going to tell you right now, that situation, the county wins when Plainfield loses. All right? And that's something that we need to address. But all of the, the things that we're talking about right now, that's important. But this money would really solve a lot of financial issues that we're having if we had access to that state funds, if we had that number over 50,000. <clears> Last note is the reference to uh, Lamar Maxson. What I did not mention when I spoke last time is this man's commitment to reinvent himself through the youth. He has internship programs that is unmatched. And we're not talking you know, just clerical jobs and you know, uh, manual labor. We're talking high tech, high skill, in demand skills. These individuals, individuals can go a long way and promote this town in the right way in various resources, whether it be internet, whether it be TV, whether it be radio, whether it be newspaper. Bottom line is, I work with this man in reference to the alternative press. And he has done great things with these people. They did a thing with the, with the high school. They did things with the city. They did many things. And he was one who taught them all levels, behind the camera, writing, producing, directing. These kids really got it. And the proof's in the pudding. They come back. They come back and they spread the word. So from my point of view, I think Lamar Max's legacy is his commitment to youth and a model for people in playing from the follow. To reinvest and stop using the youth as the excuse or the reason why you want to downplay Plainfield and use the youth to basically 
lift the plane field back up to a whole new height. The height that it deserves, the height that we should have, the height that can be obtained. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, my name is Jody Ann Harris. I uh, live at 1104 West 6th Street. And um, I'm, I'm here, I guess, to voice my displeasure of uh, the firing of Lamar Maxson. Um, I am actually one of the interns that uh, work at, works at PCCD. And um, it's, uh, it, I feel like it's just a shame to let somebody who is such a pillar in our community go like that. Um, when I was 18, I moved away. I went to college. I didn't care too much. You know, I, w I went to college in Baltimore. I didn't care too much what went on in Plainfield. Um, I got back. I came back. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. Figured it out. And Lamar gave me a chance. And through that chance, I learned to care about my town. I care what happens to Plainfield. I care how other people view Plainfield now. Hmm. I learned so much from this man. I learned how to produce a show. I have my own show, sports show, that 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 displays all of uh, the high school athletics. Um, and I guess without his guidance, I I wouldn't know what to do. I learned how to produce. I learned how to write. I learned how to operate a camera, that camera, um, and. Like I said, I, I, I just think it's a shame to let somebody go who who wants nothing but the best for this town, for this city. And yeah, that's that's really all I have to say. Thank you so much. Richard Stewart, eleven seventy one Gresham Road. Um, I I'm here to speak about sort of my outrage about the misinformation that's being told to myself and fellow residents. Um, I heard several of my residents regarding the Lamar Madison firing uh, say that we need to find the money. You know, they, they, we should be concerned about the budget concerns. That's just not the facts. Uh, I printed this from on the website, the budget approval general appropriations. And um, earlier this month, it was approved five to two to give the media budget $180,000. It was approved, five to two. <coughs> the last, the 2013 budget was, again, printed off the website, um, $113,000. So from $113,000 last year to $176,000 this year, that's an increase in budget. There's no need to find money. It's there. So I don't understand. I know um, Mr. Smiley said that there was a $107,000 reduction. Well, th there's clearly a miscommunication between what the council believes is, is in the budget and what the city administration said, uh, believes is in the budget. $107,000 deduction should not be a footnote just thrown in in the middle of a council meeting. It, it, it's either there or it's not there. I, I'm part of the CBAC. I took my responsibilities, responsibilities to heart. I did the budget. I went all up the meetings, and it was approved five to two, one hundred eighty thousand dollars, a fifty thousand dollar increase. And then we're reducing services. <laughs> we're reducing the count. We're reducing the, the the recordings of the council meeting. We're reducing the the position of a great man like Mr. Maxson, who only brought more energy into to the uh, city council meetings. He's always there, he's always filming, he's always at the events. And now, again, I'm outraged because it seems like the public thinks it's a budgetary reason. And it's not. And it's not. And I just want that to echo through the airwaves, echo through the mic, unless there is something that I don't know about, but it, it was approved, five to two, $180,000. And it, that needs to be not lost in, in the back and forth. The money's there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the previous administration actually did, as far as I know, appeal those census numbers. I don't know who 
would be able to follow up on that, but it would be worth following up. Because it was so close. Yes, yes. The other thing is, um, I, I think my son would love to have direct deposit. He makes a very small salary. He's back and forth to the bank. But as of July 1st, our bank told us that there, you have to keep a minimum balance of $500. And you will get charged for a printed statement mailed to you. And I'm off the hook because I'm 76 years old. So. But other than that, you know, working people will, I mean, you know, I hope you find some banks that don't have those sorts of requirements. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> um, Rashid Abdul Hop, 1272 Park Avenue. I really didn't have anything to say about Jared tonight. <laughs> but he should be able to clear up this $48,850,000 problem. I mean, he's at the county, he's at the state, and he has influence on people in Plainfield. So he should be able to clear that up as a waiver as possible. He's the one that should start doing his job. Also, I see an ordinance of morals and conduct dealing with smoking. I really think you all should amend that and add in about people pulling their pants up. They shouldn't. Oh, congratulations, uh, Reverend Taylor. Uh, and uh, and I guess you all know some of the work that Vera is doing down on Lee Place. She's doing a lot of work. She gets a few people to help her every now and then. But she's always the one that's really doing all the work. And uh, um, you know. Mr. Maxson, he worked his way up to, to, to a job. He had turned it into a job <coughs> that he should be paid to do. And uh, for him, considering what he's developed and now have to go back to zero and start all over again, it's really like the end of his world. And. Uh, but I'm sure y'all <laughs> get it right. Great. Um, oh, the, the lady came up and spoke about the Senate. And it, you know, Joe, you to have times, the council people. You know, you should be down there. All, all of you uh, are getting close to 39 <laughs> years. So, um, <laughs> But it can be, there's a lot of stuff going on that. I enjoy it. Um, city government, I just wrote this down on the city here. Seems worse than it's ever been. We are close to the last straw. And what goes on after that, I'm not sure. But thank you. Thank you. Any more for privilege of the floor? Oh, I move that we move first public comment period. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Vote for okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Vote for okay. Thank you.